Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about white dwarfs. So let's dive right into it. So what exactly is it? We are talking about a white small size star. That's why it's white dwarf. It's white and it's very small. Now generally stars are in a different category when it comes to size we know about moons we know about planets but star is something different it's on a different uh, basically scale uh, same way you measure small things like like the cloth in meters and all that jazz you don't measure uh, like you know star, planet on that kind of scale so same way stars are on a different scale on a like you have to have so many zeros in a kilometer to count that it's it's hilarious basically the number becomes like you know uh, 10 to the power of 1500 zeros and something like that so stars are generally on a different scale However, this puppy is completely different. It's on the other direction. It's literally the average size of a white dwarf is literally equivalent to Earth's diameter. So a star that has like more oomph as a star in terms of density wise somehow is small enough to have a like a you know, diameter of a planet. So that's the interesting part about this. Now, generally, this is a death stage. Basically, once a star dies, only then this becomes because again, fusion will not allow something this small to happen. So red dwarfs and yellow dwarfs basically not the big ones because everything about a star is controlled by its mass if bigger it is the uh, like you know end of life would be directly dependent on that basically if you started with something that had 100 solar mass it will have a different uh, death sentence compared to if you started with something let's say which has half solar mass basically our sun as a unit of one if you had half of that you will have a different end goal versus if you had let's say 100 or 1000 times more you will have a different outcome so generally you have red yellow and blue so red ones are very long lived but small stars and yellow is medium size our one and uh, there are big ones which are uh, you know blue giants however they will live very short lives uh, compared to this this white dwarf happens only to red dwarfs and uh, basically yellow stars so majority of this uh, star systems and milky ways generally most of, most of them will turn into white dwarfs at the end of their life and this is ludicrously dense basically it's hard to observe the star itself because it's not that bright however its effect its gravitational lensing, uh, lensing and its uh, effect on its uh, nearby stars those are surprisingly easy to detect so what the heck do i mean when i say red star well star in simplest sense is just a balancing act it's a balancing of gravity and inside pressure trying to go outwards it happens because of fusion so basically uh, simpler atoms is turned into complicated atoms basically hydrogen to helium helium to uh, oxygen oxygen to argon argon to silicon silicon to iron things of that nature basically you have that happening at the core that is creating heat and pressure outwards and gravity which is like bro you have too much mass i have to compress you so these two are in balance when they are in balance we call it a star a live star so what happens when fusion runs out of fuel matter starts to collapse because gravity does not have an off switch so gravity starts to collapse it however once it starts to try collapse 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 it reaches a certain threshold so if the starting mass was not too high it will reach a point where electron is like you shall not pass basically electron will create a core which will like bro you cannot compress me beyond this point this is a quantum physics level uh, you know uh, rule so to say the same way we have newtonian physics quantum physics also has a rule where you cannot have hundreds of electrons in the same place even though atoms are mostly empty space 99.99 percent empty space you still have a limitation how much electron you can pack in a let's say one shell around it so when stars try, basically gravity starts to collapse it and it reaches that point where electrons are like look quantum physics does not allow me to like you know compress any further it reaches that point where it's like bro i will not compress anymore so electron stops it basically uh, the, instead of having fusion that is pushing it outwards electron is like i will not allow you to compress anymore that's it like Electrons says, bro, apply breaks you. And that's directly proportional how heavy the starting mass was. If starting mass was too high, this electron will not be able to hold it on. At that point, it will collapse to neutrons and neutrons will hold it up. If it's even higher than that, then it's like black hole. It's like at that point, space time is like, I can't handle you. But generally, um, most of the stars in our universe, generally they will have an electron degenerate stage, which will be like, bro, you shall stop. Now, this is generally classified as degenerate gaseous state is achieved. Now, this state is a very very stable state because nothing active is happening it's just like gravity is a constant force electron force outwards it's also a uh, basically a stable force it's not changing there is no fusion there is no fission there is no reaction happening it's just like matter's property starts to affect the basically size and volume and dimensions and all that so it's very stable so it's a death of a star active star dies and it turns into this because electrons are like you shall not collapse any further than this point so how do we find this tiny white object? Well, they are not very bright, but 
uh, they have a very strong gravitational effect what does that mean that simply means even though they are not generating any new energy because they are again fusion and all that jazz has stopped happening they are surprisingly bright in x-ray soft x-ray specifically and extreme uv so basically you take a, a electromagnetic spectrum and you go like in our case our sun star is super bright in infrared basically it's going yellow amounts of energy in infrared and a little bit of in x-ray and gamma rays but it's like oomph is coming from infrared uh, this star generally they are very easy to spot if you have an x-ray telescope and uh, a hard extreme uv uh, system and all that so generally space-based telescope can see that that's why we could not spot them very early on but because they are found generally in binary spot it's not necessary but many times we find them in binary star systems basically two things orbiting each other uh, they are surprisingly, even though they are small, they have such a big gravitational pull, the big stars generally end up, uh, you know, going redshift and blue shift. Basically, stars are moving around. They are wobbling. We can detect it for planets. Imagine something that's, uh, you know, as massive as a star rotating around it. So it's very easy, very easy to spot. Once we know what we are looking for, we are like, dude, Doppler shifts is so easy. It's like, yeah, this has uh, wiped off. This has wiped off. Because main star will be much brighter. It will literally overshadow it. However, the, the gravitational uh, effect will not be, uh, you know, hidden. So we can easily spot it. And that's why nowadays we are finding so many of them because now we know how to look for it we have better x-ray telescopes we have better uh, ultraviolet telescopes we have better system to detect uh, basically gravitational wobble uh, doppler shift and all that jazz so we can easily spot them we went from not able to spot the nearest one which is less than 10 light years away from us to oh, it's here, here 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 we are now spotting them like you know left and right even though they are not bright but at least they are a bit better than uh, you know planets so what happens when they die? And so because okay, star died, an active process turned into a passive system, and then we reached a point. Now what happens? Well, gravity reached a point. Basically, gravity tried to collapse it, but gravity is stuck. It's like I cannot collapse you any further. There is a limit to that. I specified if it was much more massive in the beginning, it will collapse into neutron star, or if it was still more massive, it will collapse into black hole. So what defines that? Where where is that line? That line is classified as Chandra Shrikhar limit, uh, this gentleman. And the limit is surprisingly close to us. It's like 1.4 solar masses. What does that mean? That means if white dwarf begins as 1.4 solar masses, it will remain in that state indefinitely it's like gravity cannot affect it anymore but because many of the white dwarfs they are in binary state the big uh, basically plan uh, giant basically giant star is shedding material into it so that means even though uh, the original plan uh, star could be very small it went boom still very small and it created a basically white dwarf which is smaller than 1.4 solar masses it's still uh, safe but here's the deal because if material keep pouring in from outside basically from nearby star it can detonate again now detonation does not mean fusion detonation means supernova or hypernova if two of these copies collide so that's the 1.4 limit so if it's a single star and it's a below 1.4 it's gonna be like yeah I'm, I'm not gonna care because gravity while you know what it's basically like immovable object and unstoppable force it's literally like that literally so it will cool down because it does not have any active energy source and all the energy that was there was came from supernova the, that big boom and not to mention it was a star core so it was hot and it's surrounded by vacuum it's not gonna dump its energy so it's gonna cool down very slowly as in really slowly and because of the core nature it's a core it's a high density it's hot as in idiotically hot so it will uh, once it cools down it reaches a phase which we call black dwarf basically at that point it will have same gravitational uh, if structure but because there was nothing active happening and it has reached the cool down phase it will just become black uh, ball that's it it's, it's not gonna be as big uh, big or as black as a black hole but it's gonna be black it's like bro, black dwarf stage has been reached so that will that's how this puppy ends However, you have to understand this. Uh, many times in uh, astro, uh, astrophysics, we talk about numbers that are so huge, human brain cannot comprehend. It's not like my brain cannot comprehend it or your cannot comprehend it. It's like no individual can comprehend it. Be Stephen Hawking, be it, uh, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson. No one can comprehend it. It's just become something uh, ludicrous. It's like, you know, 10 trillion years, hex trillion years, one Google year. Google means 100 zero. So you can, there is a time frame where it's like this, uh, you know, evolutionary evolved brain is like, I can't handle this man. It's like, Dude, what, what the hell? So this puppy, 
that black dwarf phase that's how long it takes basically you take a white dwarf it's like okay you got the white dwarf it's a below that uh, limit where it can collapse into neutron star everything is awesome everything is stable how long will it you know cool down yeah that's in trillions of years as in hundreds and trillions of years can uh, pass before that and not to mention that point uh, the quantum effects the quantum effect that is stopping electrons from growing one place to another uh, it also has another quantum tunneling effect so what would happen in that sort of scenario there's a probability these stars will become iron basically all the elements they have they will fuse into heavier elements because of the pressure and all that now because there is no active process no uh, nothing like supernova happening it will not happen instantaneously but over long enough time enough electrons will jump from point place to another because of quantum tunneling it might turn into uh, basically iron now be mindful it is such a long time frame we have not observed a single one not a single one basically we can understand a lot about star why because we have observed thousands of them and not to mention most of them are from different category heck many stars are like dude this star only fits in its own category there is no nothing like other again limited by our telescopes and instruments but we have hundreds of them so we can when we say red dwarf we know what red dwarfs look like we have hundreds of the example blue giant and all we have hundreds of example in this sort of thing we have zero we can observe white dwarfs very easily super easily but black dwarfs no nothing why it will take longer than the universe has so to say so flat out our universe is technically classified as around 14 billion uh, year old let's just go with that 14 billion year old so not enough time not enough time it's like no not enough. That, that's like one year it's like oh universe was born like you know when i was one year old so it's it's on a different world that's why i specified the time scale here is on a ludicrous level However, uh, the output, basically the energy that is radiating away, basically it's cooling down, that output will remain stable and it's stable, calm, predictable. So basically if this star, because of its core nature, it's ludicrously hot and it's a, in the early years it would be very hot, but you can track it out on a graph and it will be very stable. Red dwarfs, which are like uh, very small stars, but they are ludicrously violent, basically they have solar winds, uh, uh, explosions, flares and all that jazz. This puppy is like silent. It's just like one heater block that is slowly fading its heat away. Nothing active happens on it. It's very stable. No coronal mass ejection. It's stable. So, uh, and the mathematics allows in such a point that we think for a fact that unless you are comparing it to against super massive black holes, this should outlive everything else. Flat out, it should outlive everything else. It should be the last heat source in a case of a universe as a heat death. So that's how long this puppy lives. It's on a different time scale. Now, because of this factor that it has a stable output, because again, red dwarfs can also live very long, but they are not stable. You really don't want to be close to them because while uh, their energy output is not in optical spectrum, they are even in harder in uh, basically in infrared. And let's say you can manage all those things. It has a idiotic amount of, uh, you know, uh, basically solar winds coming out of it, idiotic amounts of coronal mass ejections, basically bye-bye atmosphere. No amount of magnetic shield can protect against that. So it's not a, uh, you know, pleasant place. However, this has a constant output. It's just a heater block. It's like as clean of an energy source as you're gonna get. And it has really, really long-term stability. Basically, million years is nothing to this. This is like billions and billions and billions of years of stability. And it does not have a violent end because let's say you went to a red dwarf and you're like, okay, I built a system that can withstand all the solar hoo-ha and all that just awesome. Here's the, it will still go boom and it will go in Nova into and it will still create white off. But this is the afterlife. This is the after party, so to say. So it's very stable. Nothing will happen. So let's say you built a alien civilization around it and it's like, you know, we have this magical energy source which will not run out. Will the star run out? No, star will be like, bro, I'm calm. I got this. The only mathematical hope we have about its end is like, there is a probability that proton itself has an expiry date. So proton might expire. Basically, same way every element known to us has a half-life. Some of them are ludicrously long, but again, they have a half-life. They will change into something else. If proton changes, then only we can figure out, okay, at some point, this will evaporate away. But that's like, nope, that's like so far away, that's no nope territory. And because of the gravitational uh, gradient, uh, like basically how dense it is, and uh, how small the radius would be in order to have a habitable zone, the planet would be tidally locked. Basically, it would be tidally locked the uh, same way moon is tidally locked to us because you have to be that close. It is not an active star. It's not going, it has a very high, uh, you know, surface energy, but does not radiate enough ever. Again, not to mention it does not even have solar winds. So it's not very oomph, not even powerful. So you have to be very close. And if you are close, you will end up tidally locked. So that itself is a bad start. And then this is an after party of a big boom event. So that big boom event would have destroyed any planet nearby. So we have stopped looking for it. Only 
way a white dwarf could have a planet around it is uh, one or two scenarios one scenario is like uh, when the star went uh, you know giant phase the planet went inside that star now because it's a plasma it's a very low energy you can stay inside it for again eons technically and the planet will erode away but slowly let's say a super massive star like super earth free classify that if you have something like that it will last that phase and once you have white dwarf you will have a basically uh, a planet quote and quote planet because at that point it would sterilize the core crust would be turned off uh, turn on basically, basically peeled apart but you will still have a planet so that way only way we can think of right now that it could tangibly have a basically planet revolving around other scenario which is very far out but technically possible is that there was a rogue planet that uh, you know got caught into this gravity in those sort of scenario that planet would have longest lifespan as long as it creates a habitable band on its planet because again to have a stable orbit you will end up too close and at that scenario you will be in a place where you have a, like in a hot side ludicrously hot cold side almost absolute zero and then you will have a small band of livable area so habitable zone wise as long as you uh, you're talking about dyson swarm it's quite amazing in long term as in like billions and billions and billions of years but not as a, like you know we can find a planet and go there land there not like that so this was my presentation on white dwarf. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I like to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free, and as always, thanks for watching.